if I ask most computer users whether they use the mouse or the keyboard most, I'm pretty sure the response will be overwhelmingly in favor of the mouse. In fact, I'd be prepared to bet that you've probably got a mouse in your hand right now, even while you're watching this video. My name is Graham Nightingale from techbytes.com, and my mission today in this video is to get you to start using the keyboard more. For all the common operations in most computer programs, there is a mouse way of doing things and an equivalent keyboard method. I'm not saying the keyboard is better than the mouse, or indeed that the mouse is better than the keyboard, but if you know both methods, you can use the one that is most appropriate and probably save yourself a lot of time and effort in the process. This is particularly true in Word. Here's a rhetorical question for you, although I actually don't mind if you answer it. Where are your hands most of the time when using Word? I think you would probably tell me that your hands are on the keyboard typing most of the time. Any other answer probably means you haven't really got the hang of Word yet. So, every time you need to save your work, which should of course happen fairly frequently, you need to take your hand off the keyboard, find the mouse, locate the mouse pointer on the screen, find and move the pointer to the save button and click. Then you have to find your way back to the keyboard. If you knew that you could save your work by pressing a combination of the control key and the letter S, you wouldn't even need to take your hands away from the keyboard. So sometimes the keys can be mightier than the mouse. When my hands are on the keyboard, I use a keyboard method. If I have the mouse in my hand, I use the mouse. But I suppose that's really because I'm a show off and I generally know both ways of doing things. In Word, the keys are actually pretty good at getting you around a document quickly and easily. And which keys has been very well thought out. The good news is you don't need to memorize them. You just need to learn a couple of key principles. I'm sorry I couldn't resist the pun. The keys we are going to use are in the section on the right hand side of the main keyboard just before you get to the numeric pad. Apart from the insert and the delete key, all these keys move you through a document. It's fairly obvious which direction they take us. Home, page up, left and up arrow should take us further back in the document, while end, page down, right arrow and down arrow should take us further towards the end of the document. And indeed they do. It's not really obvious though how far we go each time a key is pressed. Best way to find out is to adopt child tactics rather than adult tactics and just try them out. Left and right arrow keys. These move you one character to the left or one character to the right each time you press them. At the end of a row, you get taken to the beginning of the next row by pressing the right arrow key. And at the beginning of a row, you get taken to the end of the previous row with a single press of the left arrow key. Up and down arrow keys are easy. They just go up or down one row at a time. Then we come to the page up and page down keys. It's tempting to think that these move you a page backwards or a page forwards, but on their own they don't. Try them out and you'll find they move one screenful further down or further up the document. In Word, there is always an overlap on each screenful so you can continue to read through the document using the page down key. If you want to try out the home or end keys, make sure you start in the middle of a fairly long line of text because the home key takes you to the beginning of the line and the end key takes you to the end. All of these keys do something different when used with the control key. If you've not found it before, you'll find the control key in the bottom left hand corner of the keyboard. It's marked CTRL. Best to use the same tactics as before. Try out the various combinations to see what they do. Again, if you've not used the control key before, don't try to press the two keys together. Press and hold down the control key, and while holding it down, press and release the key that goes with it. So, what do all our previous movement keys do when used with control? Control plus the left or right arrow key moves one word left or one word right in the direction of the arrow key. 
Control plus the up arrow or down arrow key is a bit of a funny one. It's meant to be a paragraph movement key, but in most documents you'll probably find that you have to press this key combination twice to move from the beginning of one paragraph to the beginning of the next. The reason for this seemingly odd behaviour is just the way most people use Word. Most people press enter twice at the end of a paragraph, once to end the paragraph and once to put in a blank line between paragraphs. It is possible to tell Word to automatically put space in between paragraphs, in which case you would only need to press enter once at the end of a paragraph. In that case, these movement keys work exactly as intended. Since most people don't create their documents like this, it's most sensible to stick to doing things the way you always have done and just press control up or control down twice. If you try control plus page up or control plus page down, you will find they now do move a whole page at a time and not just a screenful as they do on their own. The last combination is control plus the home key or control plus the end key. This always takes you all the way to the beginning of a document or all the way to the end. Now I did say earlier that you don't need to remember all these key combinations. Here's where one of those two key principles comes in. You may or may not have noticed that the control key has a consistent effect on all the movement keys. When used with the control key, all those original movement keys went further and faster. On their own, the left and right arrow keys only move one character at a time, with control they move a whole word. Home and end on their own move to the extremes of the row, but with control they go all the way to the start or end of the whole document. So the first of those two key principles is that the control key speeds up all the movement keys. Just before we take a look at the other one, the control key also amplifies three other keys. On its own, the backspace key removes the single character to the left of the flashing cursor. Each time I press the backspace key, it removes one single character. When used with control, it removes the whole of the previous word. In much the same way, on its own, the delete key removes a single character to the right of the flashing cursor. With control, it takes out the whole of the following word and one other key speeds up when the control key is pressed. That's the enter or return key. On its own, the enter key starts a new line. When used with control, it starts a whole new page. The second rule about movement keys is that if you hold down the shift key, it's over on the left hand side of the keyboard just underneath the caps lock key, the movement keys all become selection keys. So, shift and right arrow selects one character to the right each time. Shift and down arrow selects a row at a time. And I can select to the end of the row by using Shift and the End key. Now, putting the Shift key and the Control key together, we get selection as well as faster movement. Here, I'm using Shift and Control and the right arrow key to select one more word each time. Shift and Control and the down arrow key selects to the end of the paragraph. And rather speedily, Shift and Control and the end key selects from where I am to the end of the whole document. So the only thing you have to remember is that the Control key speeds up the movement keys and the Shift key turns the movement keys into selection keys. You can work out the rest by getting in touch with your inner child and having a go. Thank you for watching. Please check out the techbytes.com website for our complete range of videos and other learning resources. If you take a look, you should find a movement key cheat sheet available to download.